Hey, what is going on guys? It's DK, back at you with another video here to bring the 10 game NBA main slate here on Friday. A couple things before I end the video. Uh, if you're new to the channel, my name's DK. I do, uh, I make daily videos here talking about NBA DFS as well as NFL DFS on DraftKings. Uh, also, I'm running a weekly giveaway in this channel where all you have to do is give a like and a comment in the video. That's one entry in the giveaway. Max one comment though per video. So it starts my Monday night showdown video that I uploaded at the beginning of the week. We'll go throughout the week and we'll end my Monday night showdown video at the end of the week. So however many videos I've uploaded for the week, you're the giveaway that many times. So I have 10 videos uploaded for the week, you're the giveaway 10 times. And the winner will receive a $20 payable for myself. And again, this keeps going on each, each and every week. Uh, also, I just want to thank you guys for all support, seriously, on the videos, on the live streams, and on Twitter. I really do appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, but without the way, let's jump into the video. So first, look back at my lineup here from Thursday. So... Thursday, uh, a little tilting too. I was uh, going back and forth on whether or not I wanted to stack the Washington Philly game or the Pelicans Suns game. I talked about it in my live stream. I, I really said, you know, you probably either stack the first game or the last game. Uh, the first game was okay, but obviously not as good as the last game. Last game went to overtime too. So um, yeah, Ish Smith went with him. Obviously with no Isaiah Thomas, he was really chalky. Um, Brad Beal. So I was a little torn on him. Obviously, it wasn't a great spot, but I was playing a lot of the Philly guys. So I was like, you know, if I'm playing a lot of these Philly guys, I, I might as well run it back with Beal because if they're going to keep it close, he's most likely going to have to have a big game. He had an okay game, right? Bertans had a pretty solid game, so he didn't go crazy. Uh, the Philadelphia guys with Ben Simmons and Embiid, they did their, they're okay, right? I expected a little bit more, honestly, in like a really, really good spot. Uh, I think Tobias Harris was definitely the best play on Philly. James Ennis. Yeah, that's a bit frustrating, right? He, he was pretty consistent playing about 25 to 27 minutes a game. It was a really good spot. He got in foul trouble at five fouls, only played, I think, 16 minutes. So, yeah, I think got a bit unlucky there. Kyle Lowry, we talked about him and Fred Van Fleet were my main targets there on Toronto. He was okay, 38.75. Again, I expected a little bit more from him as well. Uh, Kaminsky and then uh, Jackson Hayes. So, yeah, if I would have stacked the late game, it obviously would have been a lot better. So let's go over the, the lineup of the first place guy. Um, someone requested I do this on Twitter, just go over the, the first place lineup in the um, tournament. So let's take a look at his lineup, right? So uh, basically a stack of that last game with Rubio, Devin Booker, Tobias Harris, Mason Plumlee, Jackson Hayes, Drew Holiday, Ubre, and Beal. So he stacked the, the late game, ran it back with Beal, Plumlee, and Tobias Harris. Again, Tobias Harris with 50 fantasy points. He was the best play there on the uh, on the Philadelphia side. So, uh, yeah, Mason Plumlee also was a guy I talked about, right? In blowout factor, he would get more run. He had a huge night. He is a guy I like playing as a value guy just because he can get you there in like 15 to 20 minutes, get a little extended run, and then absolutely crushed it. Again, Jackson Hayes, I talked about him with no uh, Derek Favors. And then, yeah, uh, Drew Holiday, Ubre, Devin Bucker had a huge night, 71, uh, flashed him and Rubio. You know, normally Devin Booker's upside was, you know, somewhat capped playing alongside Rubio, but uh, obviously not in that spot, right? 71, Rubio at 53 too. So um, that was the first place lineup. But uh, yeah, let's jump into this. Uh, let's talk about the 10-game slate here. So once it loads up. <clears throat> All right, we can take a look at the over-unders and spreads of the games that are out right now. we got seven of the ten that are out right now. So we got Nets Hornets at 218 with uh, the Nets fair by 2.5 points. Magic Cavs at 212.5 with the uh, Magic fair by 4. Nuggets Celtics at 203.5 with the Celtics fair by 3.5. Warriors Bulls at 212.5 with the Bulls fair by 5. Timberwolves OKC at 220.5 with the OKC fair by 2.5. Clippers Bucks uh, sitting at 232. Uh, with the Bucks favored by three and a half, and then Lakers Blazers two twenty two, with the Lakers favored by four. So right now, highest over under is that Bucks Clippers game. Uh, should be a fun game to watch, as well as some pretty decent targets there for DFS as well. I'll talk about that. But let's start with center as always. So Cat at ten point four k, in a you know tougher individual matchup. Right, OKC is an OK matchup as a team, but Stephen Adams a pretty solid defender. He's okay, probably not for me in this slate. Uh, He's probable, right? So I think he's going to be good to go. Anthony Davis is a guy that I do have a good amount of interest in at this price in a really good match here against Portland. Um, you know, the game against Utah, they blew him out. He only played 26 minutes. Had still 43 fantasy points in this time. And he's under 10K, again, in a really good spot. So I do have a lot of interest here in Anthony Davis at this price point. 
Uh, let's see. Drummond at 9.4K is, you know, had has back-to-back 58 fantasy point games. So he is flashing upside even playing alongside Blake Griffin. So, uh, yeah, the game blew out. And he's still in 33 minutes again at 58 fantasy points. So if you want to continue to ride that hot streak, you kind of have no issue with that. Now, I'm going to definitely, or not definitely, but I'll slightly prefer Anthony Davis to Drummond uh, for 200 more. Jokic is at 8K. That's crazy that he's at 8K. Now, again, the game against New York did blow out. He only played 25 minutes, had 32 fantasy points in that time, so that's not bad in 25 minutes. If he gets his, like, 35 minutes, he'll probably get, like, 45, right, or closer to 50. So you are really buying low here. This is a really, really low price. I don't think he's ever been below 8K, or at least not ever, but uh, in a long time. So uh, Denver is, you know, you can exploit them against the bigs, right? Like Daniel Tice, Ennis Cantor. So I actually do have some interest in here at this price. Again, probably the lowest I've seen on him in a long, long time. He's been not too good, but again, the blowout has, uh, you know, or that blowout against the Knicks did lower his price a bit. So I still have some interest there at Jokic at a, um, you know, really shocking 8K price tag. So bonus is always a guy that's pretty safe at 7.8K. Uh, let's see. Whiteside had a, a pretty big game um, the last time out against Sacramento at 59 fantasy points. The price is the price is doable, but it's a tough match here against the Lakers. I don't know if I want to go Whiteside in that matchup. Bantam Adebayo is a guy I do like at this price. He had an off game against Boston, only 19 fantasy points in 38 minutes. But this is a really good spot here against Washington. There is some blowout risk, right? Washington's on a back-to-back, but I do have some interest there in Bam at 7.5. Jared Allen's okay at 7.2K. It is a good spot. It's just, yeah, he's going to have to get you there in limited time, right? 29 minutes did put up 50 fantasy points, so he can get you there in limited time. Just the concern with him is they do have DeAndre Jordan that they will give minutes to. So don't mind Jared Allen as a uh, GPP option. Aldridge is currently listed as questionable. If he misses, we can uh, look to some secondary pieces here on the Spurs. If he plays, I think he's an okay option there at that price. Kevin Love is below 7K now at 68 Um the Cavs have just been really bad. I think he's he's an okay option, right? Even at this price, I'm still not super uh, super excited about it. Marvin Bagley is close to return, but looks like he's not going to be back for this one. So we could go to look at Holmes again at 6.8K. He's been solid. Uh, Wendell Carter Jr., is, his minutes have been really secure, right? Playing over 30 uh, last four games. It's a pretty good spot here against Golden State. It's just... The price of 6.6 is just okay, right? I would like it if he was like 5.5K. Let's see, Montrez Harrell. So this game, uh, two really good teams, and uh, the prices on these guys are dropping because the Clippers keep blowing out teams and the Bucks keep blowing out teams. So the prices on the main guys in the, on both teams of the Clippers and Bucks are dropping. Montrez at this price of 6.5K, is, I think, very viable. I think, again, in a close game, he gets around 30 minutes. So I do have some interest there in Montrez Harrell. Let's see, other options. Pirtle, I don't know if I would do it even if LMA misses. Again, that game went to do- double OT, so we got an extended run. 5.8K just seems too much to pay for him, even if uh, LMA misses. Now, uh, Rui had a pretty, big, a pretty big game against Philly in 43 minutes, put up 39 fantasy points. He had a good shooting night, right? Shot the ball, shot the ball 11 of 18. I think he's he's okay, right? It's a tough matchup, so it kind of feels like you're chasing if you go there. Other options, uh, let's see. Kelly O, but just be just be worried about him, right? Um, the minutes are never, or they're just not secure. Like that one game against Brooklyn, I only played six minutes. But uh, other than that, he's been playing right on 25, right? And this is a pretty good spot. So I think if he gets like those 25 minutes, he's a pretty good option there. Four point, uh, where is he? 4.6. Let's see. The Golden State bigs now, there's too many bodies in the rotation. They got Willie Cauley-Stein. They got, um, you know, Bowman, or not Bowman, um, Spellman and Chris. They got uh, Kavon Looney. I mean, they can run Draymond a bit. So there's too many bigs in the rotation, even in a good spot for me to consider those Golden State guys. Dwight Howard's okay here, 4.2K. He's going to play like around 20 minutes, and he's a guy that can get you there in limited time. So don't hate him as a value play. Trey Lyles could look there if LMA misses. He played 20 minutes in the last game against Houston. But... Again, I think I would like it more if he's in that like 3.5K range. 
The bigs for Charlotte, it's just they got him, they got they got Zeller, they got Biombo, they got Marvin Williams. The minutes are all over the place, so it's really hard to trust uh, you know, what the minutes are going to be like for those guys. Noel at 4.1. You know, you could bank on the fact that maybe Stephen Adams gets in foul trouble against no or against um, Carl Anthony Towns. See McGee, kind of the same situation with Howard. He's going to play limited minutes, but he can get you there in that time. Cantor at 4K, only a GPP option, right? Only played six minutes in that last game, so you know that's only a GPP flyer at that price. Patrick Patterson, who would not chase that last game in 26 minutes at 36 fantasy. Points. Normally, he's a really, really low usage guy. He just got on fire and knocked down some threes, right? So I would not chase that uh, at 3.8K. And we got Jermichael Green might be back as well. Again, Mason Plumlee, you could always go there. He's going to play around 15 or so minutes in a close game. If the game blows out, he will get a little more run. So he's a viable, cheap option. I wouldn't expect 41 again, but um, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind him there. Let's see, Looney at 3.4. The, the minutes are just too down in him, right? If if we get news, he's going to play around 20 minutes. I would have some interest, but right now, I just can't do it. That's about it. So let's move on to power forward. Uh, Giannis at the top here at 11.3. Again, his price is dropping. Now, it's a tough spot here against the Clippers, but, uh, you know, the over-under is, what, it's at 232. So, yeah, they're a good defensive team, but the price is down on Giannis, and um, you know, the reason why the price is down is because three straight blowouts, right? If this game stays close, and this game should be competitive, I think Giannis gets 35 or so minutes, and he can definitely get you there that time, even in a tough matchup. So I do have some interest there at Giannis at 11.3. Paul George, kind of the same thing, right? The, the prices are just dropping on these guys because the Clippers continue to blow out teams. I think in a close game, he plays 33 or minutes around there, right? And at 7.8K, he's definitely viable as well. Uh, the Boston on the Boston side versus Denver, that game is should be slow. Two pretty good defensive teams. I don't have a whole lot of interest besides like a Jokic who I talked about. Aaron Gordon, I mean, I liked buying low on him when he was cheap. Now he's had back to back good games. The price is up. I'll probably pass at that price. Blake Griffin's okay here at six point seven, right? Kind of like in the same scenario as Kevin Love. Like they're both cheap. I don't feel it's super great about it, but he's a guy that probably will get. 30 to 35 minutes in a close game. So, again, I, I think he's a he's an okay option there at that price. Troy and Prince, but the price is coming up. I don't know if I want to go there at that price. Let's see, other options. Again, the Golden State, like Pascal at 6.2. It just feels like too much with uh, D'Angelo Russell playing. Bertans was a guy that got a lot of run in that last game. He got 37 minutes, so at 40 and 37 minutes in back-to-back -back games. Um, he's not doing a whole lot besides scoring the ball, but if, um, you know, Washington's pretty short-handed right now, so he's probably going to be asked to play some decent minutes as well, even a tough spot. So I do have some interest there in Bertans at 5.7. Rudy Gay is a guy you could look to if uh, LMA misses. Uh, he only played 23 minutes because Popovich ran with Lonnie Walker. I'll talk about that in a sec. Or close with Lonnie Walker, I should say. Let's see. Other uh, cheap options. Again, Jamichael Green. Looks like he, he could come back. It might be like a game time decision here at 3.5K. He would be, an I guess, a, a playable option if he does play. Trevor Reza is someone I wanted to bring up here at 3.3. So with no Bogdan... Played 35 minutes. Now, Trevor Reza is not a high usage guy, right? He's a guy that will stay in the corner, shoot threes. But if he's going to play those type of minutes, right, he's going to get like around 30 minutes at this price point, I think he's worth a shot. Now, this depends on if Bogdan plays. If Bogdan plays, I think those minutes go down, right? So I wouldn't feel as confident if Bogdan plays. If Bogdan misses, I think Ariza is in line for some decent minutes as well. So I do have some interest there at the price at 3.3K, even though I know he's a very low usage guy. Um, even a guy like Myers Leonard at basically min price, right? You know he's not going to play more than like 15 to 20 minutes, but it's a good spot, and he could get you there in limited time. So just thought I'd bring that up. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for power forwards. Let's move on to small forward. LeBron, these Lakers prices are both appealing with LeBron and Anthony Davis. Uh, LeBron at 10.1, AD is at what, 9.6, and it's a pretty good spot here against Portland. So I do have interest in AD. I do have interest in LeBron in a good spot. Both of them are too cheap in my opinion. 
Kawhi Leonard, kind of the same thing here with Paul George. Uh, they're underpriced because they continue to blow out teams. This one uh, should stay close. It should be a fun game to watch, too. And, yeah, I think all, all the guys here are underpriced. So I have interest in Kawhi. I have interest in Paul George. I have interest in Giannis. I have interest in Montrez Harrell. I'll talk about Chris Middleton in a sec. Uh, Jimmy Butler at 8.1 has been uh, really on fire here. Back-to-back -back games and tough matchups, too, against Toronto and Boston. 62 and 55 fantasy points. So he's on fire, and now he gets a really, really good spot here against Washington. So you got to have some interest here in Jimmy Butler. Again, there is some blowout risk since Washington's on a back-to-back. -back. But he's been amazing the last couple of games. Buddy Heald, too, at 7.6. Just playing huge minutes. And 24, 20, 21, 24 shot attempts. He's filling up the stat sheet, too. Assists, rebounds. So you got to have some interest here and with Buddy Heald at 7.6K. In an up-tempo game against San Antonio. Uh, if Bogdan misses again, there's more usage to go around. So... Yeah, I like body, Buddy Heald there at 7.6. DeRozan, you could look to him if LMA misses at that price at 7.4. Let's see, other options. Uh, Middleton, I have some interest in here at 6.3. Again, he's played limited minutes because of the blowout. Only played 25 in the game against Detroit. It was probably on pace for over 30 of the game, so he's close. This one, it should stay close. I know, again, the Clippers are a tough defensive team, but um, at this price point, I do have some interest uh, of Chris Middleton. I think he's a safe option with a little bit of upside. Draymond Green, they're just capping his minutes right at 27 is the minutes limit that Steve Kerr said. So I just don't see the upside in him. I think he's okay, but I think I'd probably prefer other plays. <clears throat> other options, let's see. Winslow, so this is actually pretty big news. We still have no Goran Dragic, and Winslow is currently as questionable. So if Winslow misses, then I would really like none, and I would really like Tyler Hero because I, I assume he would be uh, the one that gets uh, more minutes. And again, this is a really good spot. So if Winslow misses, those two would be the direct beneficiaries, in my opinion. If Winslow plays, I do have some interest here at 5.5K in a really good spot. Chris Dunn at 4.9. So I still like him, even at an elevated price. Now, the game against Memphis only played 24 minutes because he did foul out. He got in foul trouble, too. So he was on pace for about 30 or so minutes. And again, this is an up-tempo game. Um, you know, Golden State plays, like, no defense. So... I still have some interest at Chris Dunn there, even at an elevated price point. Marvin Williams. So, again, I, I talked about Cody Zell and Bismack Biombo not really be able to trust him. Marvin Williams has played 31 and 27 minutes. Now, I don't know if we expect that continue right 23 19 before that, but he would be the one big on Charlotte that I would take a shot on just because the minutes have been up on him recently, right? Lonnie Walker. So, I wouldn't chase this, right? He The double overtime game played 35 minutes, had 42 fans. Now, I'm a big Lonnie Walker guy, right? If you guys watch my Summer League videos, I was all over Lonnie Walker. He was really good, and I'm happy he's finally getting some minutes. Don't know if he's going to continue to stay in the regular rotation, right? And if LMA comes back, again, I just I don't feel confident in... I need to see him play more consistent minutes, or consistent minutes on a... Minutes on a consistent basis, sorry, uh, for me to target him there. Let's see... Uh, C.D. Osmond, so this is kind of gross, right, at 3.9K, but he'll probably get over 30 minutes in a close game. So at 3.9, doesn't have to do a whole lot to get you there, right? Clarkson, what have his minutes been like? I think they've been down a bit, right? Yeah, only about 20, so I think I would prefer C.D. who's playing more minutes. Troy Brown thought he would get a little extra run with no McRae. Only got 18 again. They gave all those minutes to Bertans. Isaac Bamba, don't want to go there. I'll talk about some other uh, Washington plays here in a sec. <clears throat> but I think that's about it. So let's move on to shooting guard. Um, Beal at the top at 8.6. It's a tough spot, but we know uh, he's going to play close to 40 minutes in a competitive game, and he's their go-to guy, right? He had a decent game there and a tough match against Philly. This is another tough matchup, but the price at 8.6K makes him very playable. Dinwiddie. I still think he's playable also at this price at 8.2K. It's a really good spot here against Charlotte. He's going to play 35 minutes in a close game, and we know it can still get you there at that price. Right? He had 65 there against Boston, so I still do have some interest there at, of Dinwiddie at 8.2K. DeAndre Russell, um, you know, I was worried about them limiting his minutes, and they did only play 25 minutes, so I can't go there until he's going to be playing you know, mid-30s minutes on a consistent basis. Zach Levine, still have some interest in him as well. Uh, just put, The minutes are 
way up on him, right? He's averaging about 35 minutes a game. Again, this is a really, really good spot. That game against Golden State uh, a couple weeks ago had 58 fantasy points. So I think Zach Levine very much in play there at uh, 7.8K. Let's see. Other options. Brogdon seems like a safe option here at 7.3K. Going to play around like 30 to 35-ish minutes in a close game. This is a decent spot. So I think he's a safe option, right? He'll fill up the stat sheet. Rogier talked about him and Devontae Graham liking them in that um, you know game against uh, what was it? they played Golden State right had 51 fantasy points down. Don't know if we expect that again, but uh, this is another good spot here. So against Brooklyn, uh, so Rogier and Devontae Graham I think even at their elevated price points are uh, are definitely viable. Did they moved Devontae Graham to point guard only. I think they did. Yeah. Um, let's see, other options, Lou Williams, so yeah, like I said, all the Clippers guys are very much viable, the prices are all down because of the blowouts, this game should stay close, should be fun to watch, I think Lou in a close game gets about 30 minutes, so he's definitely viable as well at that price, you got Middleton, I talked about him, let's see, Santa Rancy, I still have some interest in him, even at an elevated price point, just because the really good matchup, and because he's playing consistent minutes, just like Levine, right, he's getting about 30 to 35 minutes, uh, he's a guy that will fill up the stat sheet, right? So I still have some interest at it. even at an elevated price point. Him, Chris Dunn, Zach Levine, all the guards really for Chicago I do have interest in. Schroeder's always viable for GPPs, but I like it when he's a bit cheaper, right? 5.7 is, I don't know if there's enough meat on the bone for me to go there. Um, Markel Fultz at 5.6 is just really, really safe and consistent, right? We know he's going to get around 30 minutes. We know he's probably going to get you 25 to 35. So I think he's a safe cash game option. Alec Burks, don't know if I want to do it with, uh, you know, with DeAndre Russell now back. D. Rose is always a viable, you know, option for GPP. He's going to put limited minutes, but can get you there in that time. Bogdan, so he's listed as questionable, right? With that knee injury, if he misses, that's a boost to Buddy Heald who's been killing it. Um, if Bogdan plays... I don't know if I would do it still, right? The knee, the the hamstring, I think it was, right? He's just banged up, and they're limiting his minutes. So I don't even know if I would. I like the price, but, again, I'm just worried about his, uh, you know, his injuries. Now, Kendrick Nunn, again, I would really, really like him if Justice Winslow misses. I think him and Hero would have to play big minutes in a good spot. So he's someone I would definitely go to if uh, Justice Winslow does miss. Pat Bavlier, 4.8K is okay, too, as well. Um... You know, in a close game, I think he gets over 30 minutes. Kobe White is the GPP option there for Chicago. Again, I, I think I prefer to Sandoransky, Dunn, and Levine on the same team. Hero, so he's been bad the last couple games, right? Uh, last three games has been pretty bad. 21 minutes, 5 fantasy points. 18 minutes, 12 fantasy points. 20 minutes, 9 fantasy points. Not been shooting well, but we know he does have upside, right? And... Uh, I think he'll have to play more Mets if uh, Winslow misses. So him, Patrick Nunn, would definitely look to those guys if uh, you know if Winslow is not able to go. Let's see other options. Um, Yogi Ferrell. So right now we have Corey Joseph listed as questionable. If he misses, uh, I think Yogi Ferrell will probably pick up a start. And if that's the case, Yogi Ferrell will be a really, really good value play. Right when he gets minutes, he's normally pretty consistent. So. I would definitely have a lot of interest there in Yogi if he picks up a start, if Corey Joseph does miss. I think that's basically it, though. So let's move on to point guard. I already talked about liking LeBron, right? Still no Kyrie, so we can definitely go to Dinwiddie. Uh, Lillard at 8.5 is doable here. It's a really tough spot here against the Lakers, but he's a guy that normally steps it up in the, the tough matchups, right? So I still have some interest here in Lillard at a uh, in a really tough spot. Devontae Graham, yeah, so he is only point guard eligible. Him, Rogier, I know they're priced up, but it's still a good spot. He had 63 that last game. Don't think we're going to expect that again, but I still think they're okay. they're definitely in play. <clears throat> again, Kemba is, this game in general, besides like Jokic, don't have a whole lot of interest in. Kemba is a guy that you know does have upside, even in a tough spot, but I don't know if I want to go there on this slate. CJ's okay as well at 7.4. Again, it's a tough spot. Jamal Murray's okay too at 6.4. Um, you know, again, not really the best spot, but the price is doable there. See, Eric Bloodso, 
Again, a lot of these guys just seem a little bit too cheap. Normally, I'm not super high in those Milwaukee secondary pieces like Bledsoe and Middleton, but I think they are viable um, in a game that should stay close, right? That's kind of been the downside of these guys in the Bucs and the Clippers, just continuous blowouts. Rajon Rondo, so I'm kicking myself the other day because I had him originally in my lineup there against Utah, but just the minutes before that were up and down. He played 32 in the game against Utah, almost had a triple-double, right? I like playing Rondo a lot in DFS because he doesn't have to score to get you there. He'll get you the assists, the rebounds, the blocks, the steals, and if he's having a good shooting night, he could crush. This is a good matchup, but I don't know if we can expect like 32 minutes again. Now, he did play really good, so I think the minutes maybe go up. I think he gets my best guess around 25, even at this price point. I still have some interest. Obviously, I would like he was cheaper, but again, he's a guy that uh, doesn't necessarily have to score to get you there. Isaiah Thomas, we missed this game th uh, Thursday. My best guess is he probably will miss this game again. So if he misses, we, uh, we can go right back to the wall with Smith. I'll talk about him in a sec. Let's see. Um, okay, so Ishmith. Yeah, 3.6K, right? He was the chalk tonight. Played 34 minutes at 33 fantasy points. If Isaiah misses again, we can go right back to the wall here. I think it would be one of the top value plays. I don't know if we expect 34 minutes again, but I think he's a guy that can probably get you or play around 25 to 30. And at that price, that's just way too cheap. If you want to get really risky, you could look to his backup here, uh, Chris Chioza. At uh, 3K, right? Only played 11 minutes, but maybe he gets a little more run because of the back-to-back. -back. But obviously, Ish would be the, the safer preferred target there um, at 3.6. And I think that is about it. Again, I talked about Yogi Ferrell. Corey Joseph, who I might have glossed over, right? He's currently listed as questionable. If he misses, we could definitely look to Yogi. I'd assume would pick up the start there at point. Um, yeah, that's basically it. So... I think that's new up for today's video, guys. Again, uh, it's very important to follow me uh, on Twitter. That will be in the description below. I'll get my thoughts as we get more injury news throughout the day. Also, check out the live stream. I'll probably be live streaming 45 minutes before lock on my YouTube channel, going over all the news um, that's happened throughout the day, right? Um, but yeah, thanks again for coming to check the video, guys. I really do appreciate it, and uh, I will see you guys later.